Good morning, everyone. It's Frank with Diamond Six Cowboy Cooking. Like I said last night, that I was going to be working on some cast iron today. I'm going to grab this cast iron skillet. I kind of got a small skillet here. It's kind of hot. But I've sanded this skillet down. I got a little orbital sander here. Got it at a Walmart, just kind of a cheap little sander, but. I went ahead and I sanded that down and this thing was rough. It felt like the bed liner of a pickup. And I've done the same thing to this thing, to this one. This is that Westing house I told you about. I went ahead and sanded him down. <clears throat> it took me two sheets of sandpaper. And that's kind of what happens to it. It kind of gets gummed up and I mean I ruined two different pieces so but you know I got all that crap off so uh, I got a couple other pieces that just for fun I'm gonna smooth out just a little bit today so waiting for these to warm up turned up my stove to about medium heat and you know, this little one is probably ready to go what I'm doing is I'm going to uh, put a little bit of grapeseed oil in it it's a high heat oil Use a little more than usual, and I'm gonna grab. That's what I got these up here for. These are pretty handy, lint-free rags. Definitely want lint-free, so just gonna wipe that around. See if I can't do this one-handed here. These a little bit heavier is probably working better, but. Well, as you can see, there's a pretty good coating oil in there. So, when this other one's done, uh, we'll go ahead and put them in the oven. I got the oven preheated at uh, 350 degrees. So, we'll go ahead and stick both of these little guys in there. Let's go ahead and oil this one up. So here we go, I'm gonna put some grapeseed oil in her. A little more than I normally would because we I've taken the seasoning all the way off these. So so we gotta we gotta redo it. So uh this is not a one time deal. We're gonna do this probably oh heck, we're gonna do this at least three times here. So yeah, it's It's kind of hot. I might, get, I might let him get a little too hot. He's kind of warm. Anyway, all right, we got her done. Anyway, as you can see, pretty good coating oil. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna stick these guys right here in the oven for about 40 minutes. So. We'll see what they look like here in a little bit. Hey guys, I'm back. Thought I would show you what I have done to these skillets. Let me grab a hot pad here, a towel or something. Remember how these things looked? Man, there's light everywhere here. Remember how these things looked when I took all the seasoning off of them? Just want to show you this. You see how bronze kind of goldish color that is? That's the big one I did. Now it's not really big. What is it, like an 8 inch or 10 inch skillet, something like that? And here's that little guy. Boy, he really took a good seasoning. Yeah, I remember I had to sand these all down. I had to sand off all that that rough pre seasoning and, and bring that back. Now, you don't have to season these until they're black. I and mean, you could. I mean, you could sit here and do this. I don't know how long it take. It take you all day, and probably part of the next day, to turn these things black. But that's good. That that's a really good color. That that kind of bronzish color. That means it has taken a good seasoning. And you know, I suppose I should have just fired these up and should have showed you that these will fry, and you know, stuff shouldn't stick very bad. 
Maybe I'll do that here tomorrow morning when I make breakfast. But anyway, I just wanted to show you how these things turned out. And they turned out really well. About I'd cook them in the oven at 350 degrees for about 40 minutes. And then I'd go ahead and shut the stove off, let them cool down to room temperature, pull them out, put them back up on the stove, warm them up, turn the stove back on, preheat to 350. And uh, season them, you know, get them warm, put another coating of oil on them. And I was using this grapeseed oil, and it did a really good job. Like I said before, I like to use flaxseed oil. When I'm, when I'm redoing these, I like to use flaxseed oil. But this is all they had. And I went to Hy-Vee, I went to Walmart, and those are our two biggest grocery stores here in part of Nebraska I'm in. And I've used grapes, grapeseed oil before, and that's a good high heat oil. I mean, these are not going, you know, it's, it, and don't go rancid either. You know, that's, that's one thing that, you know, a lot of those dutch oven gurus like oh let's i don't know if you ever heard of kent rollins or not but he'll tell you the same thing that you got to watch using like shortening or uh bacon grease or any of that other stuff that those other like real thick heavy oils they'll they have a tendency to go rancid and that's just one thing you don't want that's why we use you know i i've used olive oil for now five or six years and i used to use i used to think everything had to be coated in crisco because boy it it, it made things black but you had to use them uh, religiously and if they just sat or hung or whatever i did uh they they would go rancid well, I'd leave, I'd leave the grease in them. I thought, for some reason, that the longer you left grease in there, the better season they were. Couldn't find out I was wrong, because underneath all that grease was nothing but rust. Don't do that. Don't leave grease, grease. Don't leave grease in your cast iron thinking that it's just going to help season it. All you're doing is hurting your cast iron. So, And that's kind of what happened to this little guy right here. I had, oh, we had been out, I'd been out cooking, and this was about two years ago. I'd cooked for, at a rodeo. Uh, they'd hire me to come in and, and cook at this rodeo down in Kansas. And uh, I got up one morning, fried me some bacon in that. Oh, me and, you know, five or six cowboys showed up, and that was the, for some reason, that was the only skill that I had. So I fried up a bunch of bacon in that skillet, and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to leave that in there and just let it just season the tar out of that skillet. Well, that's not what happened. That thing ended up getting rustier and rusty. Underneath all that grease, there was enough moisture in that grease to rust it. So uh, just be mindful not to leave grease in your cast iron. You know, best thing to do is what I've learned is as soon as you're done with them, clean them. Just go ahead and clean them and uh you know you can run these skillets under hot water i know my my mother told me the same thing you can't put a hot skillet underneath water she was right you can't put these under cold water they they will crack or warp and be no good to you so you gotta take kind of care of them and what i do is when they're hot i get that water running just blazing hot to where it hurts to touch it i mean it burns you and take these skillets and run them underneath that water It'll be steamy, you want to keep your face out of it, but then they'll clean right up. And don't use metal to scrape them out. That's one thing that drives me nuts, is I've watched people get done cooking with these skillets, grab a chunk of steel wool, and it just makes you cringe. And they start scrubbing at these cast iron skillets like they're trying to rub a hole in it. And I, I'll stand behind them and go, uh, Hey, well, you know, what are you doing? You know, tell you, oh, I'm cleaning my oven. No, I'm cleaning my cast iron. It don't matter if they're cleaning Dutch ovens or cast iron skills. They scrub them out with steel wool. And I'll tell them, say, you know, you're, you're, you're scrubbing all the seasoning out of that skillet. No, oh, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. There's not a whole lot you can do. You can't tell a man his business. So you just kind of got to let him figure it out. And 
Then when they come to your house, you're like, man, you can scramble eggs in those skillets, and they just slide around in there like there's oil in it. I'm like, well, that's because I don't scrub mine with steel wool. Anyway, kind of rambling here. I wanted to show you, remember yesterday I was working on reminding my coffee pots what their job is. These are old coffee pots. They've had thousands of pots of coffee run through them. I mean, they, they know what their job is. They've just been sitting for a while. I just wanted to remind them. But I want you to remember, I was telling you that I had this old coffee pot from a naval battleship. Now, this is that coffee pot. And it's big. It's this big. It's a big two, two and a half gallon. I don't know how much this thing holds, but I cooked up a mess of coffee in it. And on the bottom of this, you can see it, it is heavy. It, it's got a thick bottom. Let's see. Can you read that? It's U.S. Navy. And the Volrath Company. I don't know who that was, or I suppose I could Google it and try to find it. Uh, but, I mean, it's legit. You know, this was, this is an old coffee pot. So... I'm pretty, I was pretty pleased to find this one. And then there's that old blue one I told you I was cooking with. Like, I'm cooking her up, you know. And it's seen some miles. I mean, it's, it's got some dents. It's got some dings on the lid, you know. It's, it's been used. It's been through a few miles. I want to show you the inside of this coffee pot. This is what it should look like. You see the inside of that coffee pot? Look at how black and seasoned that coffee pot is I mean it's you know it is a little rough on the outside but it's still got a good bottom it's thick it ain't got no pinholes it's got some chips on it it's been hauled away. I have no idea uh, the old boy that had this consigned at the antique store uh, they said he was in his 60s and he said that this coffee pot was his grandpa's so I have no idea how old this one is. Got an idea how old the other one is. But I made coffee in it last night. Well, you saw me cooking last night. And went out this morning, dumped it all out. And I'm kind of excited to run, drink some coffee out of it. Uh, I'm also working on seasoning this little, this is my little, my new camp coffee pot. My, my old one is, well, I got some pinholes in the bottom, but it's just a nice little coffee pot. I mean, I drank coffee out of it for the first time today. I've, I've seasoned it three times, I guess. It, it's been three, four days since I got it. And I went ahead and, I mean, put a heavy boil on it three times and let it set overnight. And, and I tell you what, that made one heck of a good cup of coffee. Anyway. Just thought I'd kind of show you what I've been up to and kind of getting geared up to do a big cooking deal down in Arkansas for a big wedding. So I've been trying to get some new stuff round up. And we're gonna, I'm gonna, oh boy, look at that. It smells delicious. You gotta make sure you don't wanna put no tight lids on this or anything. I'd never made sourdough starter before. So this is my first time. And a little nervous, a little excited. Uh, anyway, I just want to show you guys what I've been doing. Uh, you guys have a great afternoon, and I'll talk to you later.